On January 1989, real estate investor Jim Morley was on a beach in Australia. While he was scanning sports page, he took note of a senior PGA Tour. Now known as the PGA Champion Tour, the senior PGA Tour was created for legendary golfers over 50. This was where the idea of a senior baseball league came from. Morley knew that a lot of golf fans followed the Senior PGA Tour to see their favorite golfers. If the Senior PGA Tour worked, why not a Senior Baseball League? Morley was also a former minor league baseball player. In 1979, he played for the Fresno Giants, a single-A level team. Once he's back from vacation, he created the Senior Professional Baseball Association. Step 1. Morley obtained a list of players who started their career between 1969 to 1978 as a proxy for age. He mailed invitation cards to 1,250 players. To be eligible to play, catcher must be 32 and over, and other position players must be 35 and over. I got back 730 positive responses. In the first week I had 100. That's when I knew that I had hit a deal. The responses exceeded Morley's expectations. Among the well-known MLB players, they were Joaquin Andahar, Vita Blue, Bruce Butchie, Bobby Bonds, Bird Campanarius, Bill Campbell, Cesar Cedeno, Jose Cruz, Mike Guiller, Doc Ellis, Hall of Fame member Raleigh Fingers, George Foster, Al Hrabisky, Hall of Fame member Ferguson Jenkins, Dave Kingman, Bill Lee, Ron Leffler, Dennis Leonard, Bill Madlock, Greg Nettles, Amos Otis, Mickey Rivers, and Ron Washington. The most oldest player was Ed Rakow. He was 54. Even Dick Williams and Earl Weaver accepted to manage a team in the league. Step 2. Morley had to find places to play. There were a lot of MLB spring training facilities operated by city officials that were usually empty during winter in Florida. Assisted by his brother, Morley toured the state to meet the city officials who ran the ballparks. As the 1989 MLB season was fast approaching, the Senior Professional Baseball Association generated a lot of publicity among the baseball community. Step 3. Morley had to find team owners. He received 73 inquirers. Seven of them were awarded a team. Morley himself became the eighth owner. Step 4. Morley hired former MLB player Kurt Flood as the SPBA commissioner. Step 5. Morley signed a three-year television contract with Prime Network. After 10 months of work, what could go wrong of the SPBA? Here was the 1989-1990 season divisional alignment. These was eight teams. In the Northern Division, there was the St. Petersburg Pelicans. The Bradenton Explorers, the Orlando Juice, and the Winter Haven Super Sox. In the Southern Division, there was the West Palm Beach Tropics, the Fort Myers Sun Sox, the Gold Coast Suns, and the St. Lucie Legends. For the first season, Morley's objective was an average of 2,000 people per game. On the opening day, the attendance was an average of 2069 fans per game. After the opening game, the attendance figures dropped. Most teams struggled with low attendance. They drew less than 1,000 people per game. Raleigh Fingers said, You're playing in the winter time in Florida and everybody still wants to go to the beach during the day. And they don't want to spend a night at the ballpark. That's why we didn't draw. There was also another problem, right before the SPBA postseason, MLB spring training was scheduled to start. As a result, most ballparks ended up being unavailable. 
The only exception was the Terry Park, in Fort Myers. So the playoffs took place in this ballpark. Before the 1990-1991 season, multiple top SBBA officials were fired. One of them was Kurt Flood. According to a team owner, he didn't have a clue of what to do. The Orlando Juice, the St. Lucie Legends, the Winter Haven Super Sox and the Gold Coast Suns folded. The Bradenton Explorers moved to Daytona Beach and became the Daytona Beach Explorers. The West Palm Beach Tropics became the Florida Tropics, a traveling team. Two teams were added. The Sun City Rays, in Arizona, and the San Bernardino Pride, in California. The season was shortened to 56 games per team. The player age minimum for non-catchers was reduced from 35 to 34. During the Christmas break, a disaster occurred while the season was in progress. There was a dispute between the Fort Myers Sun Sox owners over the operating expenses. The Sun Sox disbanded shortly after. This violated the six-team minimum clause in the television contract. It was the final straw for the SPBA. The league folded before it could finish the second season. Due to bad planning, financial problem, low attendance, poor decision to play most of their games in Florida, poor ownership selection, and a total absence of financial analysis, the Senior Professional Baseball Association was doomed to fail. It was fun while it lasted. But it just didn't quite take off.